So one of the biggest challenges for me is the way Gotham Knights usually gets weighed and measured is usually on a very different pedestal. I've realized that a lot of concerns within the gaming community in regard to the superhero fandom are, in a sense, things that have been allowed and endorsed in other video games that Gotham Knights is being criticized for, even though Gotham Knights check the box in these different areas. One of them is the combat system for Gotham Knights. Now, one thing about me is if something is not satisfactory to me, or if something seems to be off base in my mind, I continue asking, continue to prod. I continue to seek because I want to get satisfactory answers. Now, to some people, it may feel tiring. It may feel like, oh, this has been done or said before. But again, this is for my own, you know, curiosity to be fulfilled and satisfied. So this combat area of Gotham Knights that usually is, it comes up as a contention is one that is very interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pitting Gotham Knights combat against numerous video games that have been, in a sense, highly hailed to be these bastion of what combat could look like in different video games. Now, right off the bat, you're going to realize that more than likely Gotham Knights is not going to rank very high because it doesn't really do too much in a unique sense. But you're going to realize that it's going to rank on similar scale as a lot of combat systems that are in different video games. Now, today we're going to start with Gotham Knights, in my opinion, what I think is its closest representative in regard to combat in video games, and that is with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. A lot of former Ubisoft developers worked on Gotham Knights. Valhalla is a Ubisoft game, and as many may scream and shout and cry that Ubisoft games are soulless and blah, 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 a lot of these people have a lot of Ubisoft games in their library. You know, for you to have discovered that Ubisoft games are soulless by the time you got to Valhalla, man, you've basically been trekking your way through a lot of these soulless games, according to you. So let's just use those as kind of a measure today. Because not only are, you know, these particular games similar in some sense, you can see a lot of different aspects of, say, the Assassin's Creed Valhalla game and Gotham Knights. I think there's a clear influence, even in the way they have their enemy numbers and some of their RPGs mechanics with the health bars and so on and so forth. Uh, you can see them there. One thing I noticed about Valhalla's combat when I actually started to, you know, revisit this topic, because I only have about 50 hours in the game, specifically my time in the game. Not as much, but I think it could have been better once I beat the game. I kind of put it down. I have 58 hours on the game. And as I was playing it just to make this video to kind of get a feel from a game feel perspective, I realized that there's something about this combat system that, you know, is in a sense in its own right, pretty cool and organic. But it doesn't necessarily flow as much as Gotham Knights can flow when you kind of compare similar entities. And, you know, you have to really try your best because there are no apples to apples comparisons. You got to use like your apples to, I don't know, let's say cherries in a sense, because, you know, here you have your, uh, you know, uh, Mystios fighting with a long range, uh, you know, in a sense, somewhat heavy uh, weapon, you know, in, uh, that it's representative of who this character is. And the closest that you can match him with is Robin and Gotham Knights, who uses a staff as well. So both characters using a staff and the way that they both fight and the abilities that they have, their quick fire abilities, their quick, you know, attack abilities, their movement, their flow. All of these different elements are things that will be weighed in this conversation. So I've juxtaposed both these combat systems on the screen so that you can kind of for yourself just see how both characters are able to kind of traverse across a combat sequence to deal with their enemy NPC types. And I'm playing both of them on PC, playing at, you know, possibly 60 FPS. I didn't care to really measure the frame rates for both of them, but, you know, it is on my production build. So I don't think 60 FPS is a big deal for either of these games, as you know, at the moment. And so with all of that, I had to say that, in my opinion, I felt like Odyssey's combat was a little weird because it really did break. But I don't expect everybody's combat to be the same when it comes to how, you know, combat systems and combat mechanics flow. But if you ask me which combat system I prefer from a flow perspective, I would definitely vote for Gotham Knights because Gotham Knights allows for continuity in order for me to be able to chain my attacks and continue to move around the battlefield in order for me to be able to change how I play, change how enemy NPCs try to, you know, deal with me. Cause there are a lot of, you know, 
uh, range characters in the Gotham Knights game, more range characters than you have in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And then you also have all kinds of different fun elements. And that's something that I really found that as I even was playing Valhalla, which I, you know, I haven't played in a long time, I said Valhalla, sorry, Odyssey. I don't know why I keep saying Valhalla, scratch all that Valhalla. I said, Odyssey is what we're talking about. I realized that I would rather prefer to play Gotham Knights because to me, I thought the combat was actually a lot more fun than Odyssey's combat. Because Odyssey's combat did have its own unique elements in a sense that it's designed differently. I prefer to be able to kind of flow in a sense from character to character in terms of enemy NPCs and be able to run around and kind of just create dynamic aspects of the way I encounter them. One other really interesting thing too is both games actually have a perfect dodge system which is something that's quite unique because I realized that a lot of people have problems with the dodge mechanics in Gotham Knights. They were like, well, Gotham Knights has got a dodge mechanic that just seems to break flow of the way you fight your enemy NPCs and so on and so forth. Well, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is not even in a sense uh, capable of flowing as well as Gotham Knights can flow. Don't get me wrong. You can actually play, you know, Assassin's Creed, uh, you know, uh, Odyssey and Valhalla combat in a high level way that really does make things flow very smooth. That game also, or this game anyways, has a dodge mechanic and a perfect dodge mechanic, which slows down enemy NPCs and you can pretty much deal attacks and deal, you know, specific extra damage on them. You also have a lot of different abilities that go with your character in terms of melee and in terms of projectile. In Gotham Knights, you have your momentum abilities that are there for you to be able to do all kinds of really fun stuff. And they interact with the world in a very unique and dynamic way. They're not cookie cutter. In the case of, say, Assassin's Creed, uh, you know, Odyssey, you you were, you know, limited to how many of them you could equip at a given time after unlocking them. Just This is just the way they build the system. I haven't really played Valhalla past like five hours, so I don't really know how Valhalla may have improved on this. But I know that you had limitations and so on and so forth. I also know that in the case of Gotham Knights, you're, you know, you have access to all of your momentum abilities as long as you have the momentum bar to be able to pull them off. You can also gear and spec to build momentum abilities when you use your perfect dodge, which gives you not only the ability to attack an enemy NPC when they miss from a perfect dodge, you can pretty much do a takedown attack or a perfect attack or whatever it's called. And then in some cases, if you put on gear that allows for you, you can build momentum abilities. So in looking at both combat systems, I see where both of them shine, but at the same time, I don't see where Valhalla, or I keep saying Valhalla, Odyssey outshines, uh, you know, a game like Gotham Knights when it comes to Robin's own combat. And I have to use Robin again. You know, I can't really use Batgirl in this scenario. I can't really use, um, you know, Red Hood in this scenario, nor can I use Nightwing. I'm trying to find some kind of a common ground between this Mystios here and even Robin himself. Maybe if I use like some of the much more shorter, close range, faster attack weapons, we might be able to go into, say, comparing with Batgirl and comparing with Nightwing. But I think this also, in a sense, emphasizes the strength of what Gotham Knights is capable of doing. Remember, in Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey, you could either play as, you know, the either of the twins. But for the most part, when I've watched people who've played as the other twin, because I played as one, and you can't switch like Valhalla, which you can switch on the fly, there's basically no difference in how both of them play. Both of them play the exact same way. And even in Valhalla, if you switch whenever you want, it's basically the same character with minimal animations to kind of differentiate between the two different characters. And you don't really see too much of a difference, or I didn't see too much of a difference in my playthrough. In Gotham Knights, on the other hand, you got to see more of that unique, uh, you know, sense of distinctives between your four characters, which is something I'm going to talk about in a separate video. But I thought I'd lead that on for the most part. So when it comes to Gotham, Gotham Knights combat system and when you compare it to other games that have received good praise, games that have received very good, uh, you know, endorsement. If you look at, say, maybe a game like, uh, you know, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and look at, say, oh, you know, what was the rating of the game? You know, how was the game received? You know, um, what was the Metacritic score and stuff like that? What did people say about the combat? You know, and all of this stuff, you'll see that there's no way that this combat outshines Gotham Knights combat. Now, I will also say, because Odyssey is my favorite of the Assassin's Creed games being set in the ancient Greek world, I will say that in terms of systems and mechanics and open world and a lot of the different aspects in terms of content and so on and so forth, 
this game eats Gotham Knights alive. I mean, it's a big, massive, open Ubisoft world game. No doubt about that. But there is context. You're dealing with ancient Greece versus just the representation of Gotham. So already you're definitely going to be seeing some really cool stuff as to how Odyssey is going to have or did have uh, or does have. I'm going to say did have, does have a bigger skill than Gotham Knights. But when we send, send it down to combat, we'll see that, you know, Gotham Knights is just as on par with this particular game as it is for any other game. I guess that's my cue to go. My phone's ringing. Thanks for watching. Peace out. This was just poor planning on your part. to come up with better strategies.